uh, a quick video on changing a keyboard on a Dell Latitude E7240. Uh, this lovely one here. So, as with most things, it's uh, turn it off, battery out first, pull that tab over until the battery pops, lift the battery out of the way. Then to take this plate off, screw here and screw here. I've got the screws out at the moment, um, just to make it a little quicker. Uh, they're just little crosshead screws, a zero size, so posi zero. Pull it forwards, lift it up. You've got a couple of clips along the top edge there that will hold it into place. Uh, so you've got your Wi-Fi card, RAM, modules and hard drive there. And what we're looking for is the keyboard, which is obviously the other side. So under this flap, which is not going to come up now, you have these two ribbon cables, one and two. And these are the connectors for the keyboard. So you want to open these up and just hook your nail underneath it and flick. Try and do that one again. That's it. And then you've got this, this one, a little blue tab, which you should be able to get your finger underneath. It says, and then just pull it out. So there should be next to no resistance at all there. It's just a little flat edge connector that sits in. Same thing there, a little brown tab on this one. That one actually comes out quite nicely. So that frees them up to make them loose. Let's take that back out of the way. Then you've got two screws to take out. So one there, again, I've taken them out already. And the other one is now going to confuse me and hide from me. Ah, there it is, over here. So that's the other screw to take out. And they're the two screws that actually hold the bulk of the centre of the keyboard in. So then we flip the laptop over. So, laptop turned over. Ignore the fact the front of the screen is missing. That's a completely different problem. So next thing to do is take this bezel off. As you can see, I've started it already. But the easiest way I find to do is with a screwdriver, in under here, and pop. And then you'll just need to give it a wiggle and work your way around to unclip it. There's no cables or anything on it, they just push through buttons. So that comes off to the side. And then got two screw, three screws, sorry. One, two, three. That one there doesn't actually have a screw in it. So get those three undone, and then down the side you have a set of clips, which the sides clip into. Now sometimes it will just pull up past them, if not you'll need to give the clip a push with either a nail or a screwdriver or something just to push it back and get the keyboard up past it, which is a bit fiddly. You can get a fair amount of twist on these, um, they do move around reasonably well so don't worry too much about breaking it, just don't obviously fold it in half. And certainly if it's the old one that you're taking out because it's broken, I won't worry too much at all. Um, so those clips off, get it up to sort of this level here, and then just lift it towards the screen. You see there's a series of lugs along the bottom here that just locate in across the bottom. And then obviously the reverse is simply enough. Feed those back down through, line your lugs up and push it in, put it back together. To get the, the top cover on here, I generally find starting at one edge and you just got to push it into place and it will just clip itself back in relatively easily. Assuming you've not been too vicious with it and broken off any of the, uh, the little clip bits, which may or may not focus. Yeah, so they're only little, so you've got to be fairly gentle when you pull it off. But to be fair on these, I've never actually had one snap off that I can think of. So, yeah, push that back into place. Uh, once you've got your screws in, so the screws are back in, and as I said, it's just a give it a wiggle, get those clips to re engage. It's easier with two hands with everything. Clip, go back along, make sure everything's seated. Like that one wasn't. There we go, and let's just check along that edge just to see whether it's actually bowed up at all anywhere. There we go, so that's that done. And then it's uh, flick it back over, open up the little ribbon cover, 
Oh, sorry about that. Presumably it will focus again at some point. There we go. So to put these back in is the reverse of what we did before. Now if you can see on the side of that one, it's got two little lugs again, one there, one there, and they line up with a corresponding set of locators in there. Now it's going to be really hard for me to show you that, but yeah, I don't think I can get the clarity. You can see that one's almost lined up, there's a little bit protruding at the front, and then it tucks in behind, so it's almost in the right place. But in this case, I've just slopped them in, nose first, that sat down quite nicely actually, it's in place, and then just push the kip down. Yeah, I can't do it. Okay, so I've managed to get that one located. It is a bit fiddly. It is a pretty much a two-hand job. So you get it in, you can see it's sat in. Those little lugs are sat into their grooves. And then, push, sit. It's down, it's closed, locked into place. So then the same with the larger one. So it might be a little easier to see on this blue one where those lugs are, because of the colour differences. So you can see it's hooked over that front bit. And then again, it's just push that down. And that latches it down into place. Cover it back up, and then two keyboard screws back in, one here, and uh, the other one over here, and then obviously put the covers back on, which is the reverse of the removal, lay it roughly into place, give it a wiggle round till you find those slots, push it back, two screws back in, battery back in, which is Latch it in at the front, push it down, job done.